Thursday, everyone. Oh, it's a big day here at Fox News. It's our 25th anniversary. Woo! Yes. All right. 25 years ago, this network was launched, and Joe Biden had just turned 69. <laughs> you know, 25 years. Now, normally, if something's over 25, it's too old for me. <laughs> but so much has happened in that time. This was me 25 years ago. <laughs> and this is me now. <laughs> That's what you get from taking care of yourself, Kat. Not a drop of that virgin's blood went to waste. <laughs> Meanwhile, you know, here's Kat 25 years ago. <laughs> and now here's her today, but without makeup. <laughs> yeah, thank God for our amazing hair and makeup team. By the way, Emily Campagno is here tonight. Here's Emily from 25 years ago. Oh, wow. You've, ch you've changed, but I totally support the transition and the decision. So what was it like back when we, we started? Well, unlike mainstream media, we weren't afraid to take chances, mainly because FNC didn't drug test us back then. Here's our first morning show called Marshmallow and Friends. <laughs> Hard to believe that did not win a daytime Emmy. <laughs> you know, I remember Ducey having to give Kill Me the Heimlich because he started choking on one of those little buggers. Their ratings plunged when Kill Me survived. <laughs> we also created hard hitting primetime programming like The Slap Factor. <laughs> Our motto back then was, we slap, you decide. How hard? That's also written in lipstick on the mirror above my waterbed. That's two groans. But people also came to Fox for the personalities. Unlike places like CNN, where hapless drones regurgitated words from a teleprompter. I mean, look at this bunch. You'd find more charisma on a coroner's table. <laughs> But Fox created relationships with its viewers, with dynamic, likable characters. You probably don't remember this lively debate show, Clucko and Murgla. Very stupid doctor. You should know better than to attack us. But we did not attack. Silence! <laughs> they were actually arguing over the Iraq War. <laughs> <laughs> then there's our edgy late night show, Let's Talk About Sax. <laughs> Cavuto has changed a lot. <laughs> that went on from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. What the stamina on that guy. And of course, this was our afternoon chat show called We Eat Children. Oh, oh, hello. I've just been to the toy shop. And you know what I bought? Should I show you? Here it is. It's a glove puppet. <laughs> and you know, you can do all sorts of things with a glove puppet. And those things we can't show you. <laughs> yes, we cut out the part where they actually do eat the children. <laughs> Our weekend show, however, was called Ferris Wheel Losers. <laughs> You know, that, uh, that show was the genesis for Outnumbered. Oh. <laughs> Finally, we launched our business channel with ultimate stock tips. <laughs> yeah, he was some kind of host. That guy got me to buy a lot of stock in Enron. So we've grown a lot since then. Well, not me, I've actually shrunk. But I don't think there's been a success story quite like Fox, coming out of nowhere, mocked by the mainstream, and then beating the hell and the lies out of all of them. 
Yes. All, all the other networks love to crap all over us, and then suddenly they all tried to become us. Fox News quickly became number one and made the other networks, of course, look like number two. <laughs> it, it happened for one reason. It wasn't afraid. We had bigger balls than a circus elephant. Fox wasn't trying to fit in with some media cool kids table. If you look at our competition, they were terrified of upsetting their industry peers, which is what happens when you all play for the same team. Fox said, screw that. There's an entire country not being served, and we're taking them. I wonder what life would be like without Fox News. I mean, or, or, or just imagine if there was only one perspective in other areas of life. Yeah, Doc, so I was throwing the football around with the kids and my elbow's just killing me. Oh, man, yeah, that's for sure. Terminal. Terminal? Shouldn't I get a second opinion? Sorry, pal, I'm the only game in town. <laughs> and I know for a fact you're gonna die. Wow, so I really have no other choices. Nope. <laughs> oh, and don't worry, when you're gone, I'll take good care of your wife. Easy, Cuomo. <laughs> So I got to Fox full time 13 years ago. You might remember this classic. Hey, this is Red Eye, a new show about politics, <laughs> pop culture, and macrame. It's kind of like Larry King, but without the dead guy. First thing we're going to talk about since this is our first show porn. <laughs> yeah. That's aged well like a loaf of white bread that felt behind a refrigerator five years ago. My, I look disgusting. But as odd as that show was, Fox stood by it like a nurse besides a gravely ill patient. Of course, they put us on at 3 a.m. I think that was the first example of social distancing. <laughs> they hit us like a body in the trunk of a serial killer's car. But they all saw something in me besides a pint of gin and 25 bar olives. They saw my genius, the talent, the quads, and they knew I was the man they wanted to see at 3 a.m. in the Eastern time zone, on TV, instead of outside their windows, crouched in the bushes. <laughs> but I'm grateful to Fox. It's amazing they hired me after visiting angels fired me. <laughs> they found that I was stealing bedpans. They make great dinner plates. But, he, but history has a way of repeating itself. The way Fox News entered the arena and clobbered mainstream news, this show now is doing the same thing with Late Night. The mainstream media treated us like a joke. Now we're the ones delivering the punchline. And every night, millions of you are laughing along with us. The current crop of stale, boring, partisan late-night hosts are more interested in having Nancy Pelosi write their scripts than they are in keeping their audience interested. SNL won't even make fun of Joe Biden. No wonder they had their lowest-rated show in history last week, their season premiere. But this show followed the game plan of Fox News. Look at what all the sheep are doing and provide what's missing. The unspeakable truths, the humor, the fun. Fox News also loves its country. And for that, Fox stood apart from the other media types who thought it cool to denigrate the bitter clingers. As CNN devolves into a shrill clown car of sad scolds, we laugh harder than Kamala Harris after doing five whippets. <laughs> as MSNBC continues to use the emergency room at the mental hospital as their employee pool, we hire the renegades. And as la late night host shows become just more boring soapbox, soapbox lectures, we're reinventing. All of those people will keep watching us, and they will keep reporting what we do and say, and we will continue to gladly let them. And we have you to thank for this. So thanks, America. And also, you're welcome, America. Yes, welcome tonight's guest. His, his parents don't let him stay up this late, and if they find out he's here, he's grounded. North Carolina GOP Congressman Madison Cawthorn. She talks so fast, auctioneers ask her to take a breath. Outnumbered co-host, Emily Campagno. <laughs> they call his fans pyromaniacs, mainly because they like to burn things. <laughs> co-host and Fox and Friends first, Todd Pyro. <laughs> and 
She's a morning person because she's constantly mourning her mistakes from the night before. Fox News contributor Kat Tim. All right. Todd, I have to go to you first because you were an intern, right, at the launch? 1998, two years after the launch, but still, I mean, this place was nothing like it is today, with one exception. What? You were always allowed to be yourself here. And for somebody like me, I'm not allowed to be myself at home. Mm. They asked me to really <laughs> tone it down. Me but too. to come here, you're right, you get it. So to come here and actually be yourself is what makes us so successful. What did you do as an, who, you, who did you intern for? Uh, I interned on a show called like The Edge. Oh yeah. Remember that thing, The yeah. Edge? Uh, they had no idea what they were doing. And I feel like I can say that. It was so unorganized, but that's what made it great because you got an opportunity as an intern to figure it out and do you, learn. Do you remember the host? I remember I once brought John Scott a script. John Scott. All right. All right. It might have been John Scott. And that was it. And there were a few other, there's a guy named Chris Osborne mm -hmm. who used to do like uh, the reports on the weekend. Yeah. And they would let me write these things. And it was a great opportunity. I also got roast beef sandwiches a lot. Yes. So I remember both of those experiences. But it's the fact that like the place has changed, but the fundamental nature of it has it. You're allowed to be yourself. And that's what makes us great. Yeah. So, uh, Congressman Cawthorn, you weren't even born, were you? <laughs> I was not alive at the time, no. No, no, no. <laughs> when did you first start watching Fox? Uh, probably about two days after I was born. <laughs> very, very, it, it, it's shocking. I mean, you know, Fox News is celebrating 25 years, which is incredible. You guys are now constitutionally eligible to run for Congress. <laughs> uh, but what's incredible is, you know, CNN is over there just celebrating having 25 viewers. Yes. <laughs> and they're surprisingly all in Terminal B of JFK. Yeah. <laughs> very good point. No, we have to. On them because right now they're <laughs> no, they let's be clear they are the losers and all they're doing are like because we're enjoying this they're doing these little things bad mouthing us saying oh we're bad for America but it's because they are the losers that's like you know Tom Brady here winning the Super Bowl and the team <laughs> saying you're bad for America does he look like Tom Brady yeah. <laughs> the women are going yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> meanwhile I look like Greg Brady <laughs> Emily, uh, you're a relatively new member of the Fox family. Was it me that made you want to join? <laughs> <clears throat> Should I be honest? Uh, I think, to piggyback on your point, that what always attracted me to Fox through all the years and through my career development was the caliber here. Mm -hmm. It was obvious that the people here and what was being produced just was head and shoulders above every other network, above everything else that was being, being put out there. and. I felt the same way. I feel like I've had the honor of participating in a lot of different industries and doing a lot of different things and nothing really felt like home. I always felt one step out and yet here I can be totally myself and provide analysis in certain ways and be myself here and there's always an opportunity to shine here. Right? We're playing football at 8 in the morning on the plaza, or we're telling jokes at 11 p.m., or we're hitting serious topics at noon. All of that stuff. There's room for all of us here, but the common denominator is the truth and that we love this country. Mm, very good. <laughs> I, I, only wish, I just wish that maybe you were less yourself. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, <laughs> not really, but... <laughs> As I said before, this is the time where we crap all over our rivals that we have crushed. There are no interesting people on the other networks. There are no cat temps. There's not a single cat temp on, on, on any of those shows. They would never hire you. They would never hire a tyrus. They certainly wouldn't hire me. No, they wouldn't. Um, uh, <laughs> but you wouldn't want to. I mean, what we're doing on this show is crazy. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes it awesome, I think. Um, I always wanted to do this. I was watching Red Eye before you knew I existed, and I waited for a few years to tell you that. <laughs> yes. Uh, be because it's, you can do what you want. You, you said you can be yourself, and not everybody here is the same. Mm -hmm. That's what people always think. Oh, Fox News, you think this, you think this, you think this. If you think that, you're going to end up being wrong, because there's a lot of people here with a lot of different perspectives, and it's just really awesome to work yeah, here. It is true, because, you know... Um... Oh! Oh, and I love the country. Uh, the good one, Emily. <laughs> I did, you know what's interesting to me is as the elites, you know, and the pseudo intellectuals crawl further up their own butts, this, it, we just become more successful. 
You know what I mean? I they're, find that. Yeah, they're eating themselves while we're rising above mm -hmm. the rest. Exactly. If I can they're eating things. their own butts. <laughs> 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 okay, I should probably just move on. <laughs> hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.